Okay, so it's about a week until my Josh Gibson baseball card needs to be complete. And here it is at the moment. It is a long way from being finished. Um, but you can see the portraits quite established. But even that needs a lot of work still. What I really need to look at today and sort out is the 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 um the shapes. This diamond shape, the ball shape, um and even the stars, I need to work out what to do with them, how loose to keep them. I, I had an idea of keeping them quite loose because I think they contrast nicely against the um, the more photographic finish to the to the portrait. I'll just give you a bit of a close up there with the paint. You can see the texture and the tones of it, which I'm very happy with how it just how it looks to begin with. But it just needs a bit more detail, it needs a bit more work to really finish that up. But it's really these kind of the more fiddly parts that I need to look at next. So first of all, I'm going to get the ball and the diamond sorted out. And that in itself is pretty tricky. And then it's going to be the finishing touches of the stars, the lettering and the bat. Um, but we'll see. It's uh, There's a long way to go still. And I've got about a week until the card will drop for the MVP campaign card tournament. So let's see how it goes from here. Now I'm just doing the diamond shape and I've used masking tape here and then before I put the paint on you give it a sand along the edges of the of the tape so you get nice crisp crisp edges so I'm just getting that sorted out and I'll put the blue on and then we'll see how that see how that comes out. So here he is peering through the blue with the tape on and he's now take it off and hopefully we'll have some nice a nice sharp diamond shape. Let's see. Okay. This is not easy to do one handed. There we go. There we go. Nice and sharp. It's essential you do that with the sandpaper. Get it that way. There you go. Beautiful. Nice tip on it too. Okay. Now let's get the inside. The edges I need they need to now sort out. And the inside edges too. And the red and the white. I'm gonna add next, but I need to let this dry, which is gonna really set me back a bit with the time. Certainly making it a bit more difficult, but we have our outside edge there nice and crisp. So next it's probably the ball. And in fact, no, it's going to be more of the diamond getting it getting it right. But we're getting there. Another step on. As is always the case with oils, I've got to probably now let it dry before I can do much else. Um, I've got the ball kind of in, the blue borders there, the red insides there. I've got the bat sorted tonight as well. But I really need to get the lettering done, get the ball sorted out, what's going in beside the ball, the bottom of the bat too. And then obviously get back to Josh. There's a few final touches that I want to put on as well, but it's, it's looking sharper, it's looking crisper, it's looking more complete. But I do now have a a couple of days probably to wait for it to dry enough so I can get back to it. Luckily it's warmer at the moment, so I'll be able to I'll be able to um get to it sooner, I hope, but we'll have to see. Today I'm looking at the what I've still got to do on my Josh Gibson baseball card. What 
what I've got in the design here that I still want to include here. And also I've got to think about how to include it. And really important at the moment is I've got to think about the order in which to in include it. So over here, what I've got is a kind of a job list of um, things that I need to do. I've decided that for the line, the outer white line around the outside of the diamond, I want to make that a fade. I want to, I want to blend it in almost to the black, which I think will pop Josh and that diamond forward a little bit. And um, I think it will, it, will, it will look really smart. But for that to be effective, I need to do the stars over the top of it. They will sit on top of that fade. So first of all, I need to get that fade done. Um, and then I'm looking at the other bits that I need to do. These ones I've said actually that I've got no order for them, but that's not really correct because there is going to be, there are going to be things which will overlap. So I've got to, um, I do need to work out a bit more of the order of how I'm going to do things. I think today what we're going to try and get done is get this fade done, let that dry overnight. Because these are these are oils. I'm starting to put some secative in, which speeds up the drying time um, because I'm running out of uh, my deadlines approaching. And then what I'm also going to do, try and get done today, is the, the the inner white line. And I'll mask that off. And I'll probably get back to the portrait as well, because I don't need to worry about the order for that so much. And the lettering needs some real attention too. So I'm going to get on to things that I can do while it's... Um, while it's, it's, it's a little dry from the things I did yesterday. So while I can get to that, I'm just trying to plan my order. So I've got some sort of structure to the next few days getting this piece finished off. So I've just added this inner white line and the glow and both are working really nice. You can see there's a yeah, the glow is going to give it a nice kind of fade. And then that nice sharp line with the masking tape also gives it a nice, almost like a full stop. It changes the speed and the rhythm of the the way your eye looks around the, the paint. You've got a softer area, then you've got a more heavy, heavy area. So it's now a case of letting those bits dry. Back to Josh as soon as possible. And I've got to work out how to do the lettering, how to handle it. The more I'm doing the more I think it needs to be pretty sharp and crisp. So I might need to re repaint the whole thing. Um, we'll see. They've got a thing in painting. I remember learning about organic ways of painting and mechanic ways of painting. So you've got mechanical ways, which are like using the masking tape, nice sharp edges. And then you've got these organic areas, like on the face where you've got the brush marks, the human hand is more visible. And we've got that again in the fade. So, a painting really works nicely when you get a mix of those things, I find. You want some different changes. Like I said before, it kind of changes the speed and the rhythm of the piece and the way your eye your eye looks around it. So it looks like, well, we need a bit of that for the lettering, I reckon, and that'll look absolutely fantastic. So there's still a ton to do, but I need to let it dry. Uh, we'll have to see. Hopefully I can get back to it tomorrow. I'm not sure there's much more I can do today. We'll see. Welcome back, everybody. It is about, it's less than a week before this has to be finished, way less than a week, to be honest. And it is, I still got a way to go in it, but it's looking good. Yesterday we got this nice crisp white line trim on. We got the fade sorted out um, and we did a bit more on the portrait too. Um, the lettering is kind of next along with the ball. Uh, and I've got a big problem. The big problem is the stars. I wanted 12 stars. The problem I've got is that on this side, we've got six and six on this side, the cap covers up that one star. I've always known that was going to be a problem and kind of just try to ignore it. But unfortunately, it's still a problem. So I need to work out how I'm going to place the stars and how I'm going to deal with this part of the cap and whether I make the star come out behind it or it goes on top of it or whatever. But I think I'm going to have to do some drawing there 
and uh, on with another piece of paper draw out the whole thing and kind of get an idea of what might look best. Tricky, but anyway, enough of this. Time to get on with the painting. So sure enough, what I've got to do here is carefully cut out the the um, the parts I want to paint. So I've got Josh's name up there. I've got the ball here. I still got to work out the stars. The stars are a, a perpetual problem. Um, but I've just got myself some gold kind of chrome sp spray paint, and then this one, which is a bit more glittery, not quite as shiny. So I'm going to do a little bit of experimenting with them and work out which is going to be the best for definitely the name. The ball, I'm kind of thinking I might do that in, in those as well, but we'll see. Um, yeah, that's what that's what we're up to at the minute. Let's see how it goes. All this sort of stuff takes me a lot back to when I was at university and I was doing a lot more painting that needed a lot more masking and so on. But you get these nice crisp, sharp edges, which should look great later. So Josh is under here. It's all masked off. I've got my stars in place. I've got the ball sorted and his name. And now I've just got to spray it and fingers crossed it all works absolutely fantastically first time let's see so here it is sprayed I've got a nice golden golden tablet in the garden here um so I've just got to let it now dry and then we'll peel off the tape and the newspaper and see how it's See how it's come out. Really important when you're doing this stuff is to do it outside, or if you have to do it inside, wear a mask because the fumes are terrible for your body or terrible for your respiratory system. So be careful if you are using them to protect your lungs and your yourself properly and others. So um, yeah, time to let this dry and see how it looks. So it's time to take the masking tape off the painting and see if see if this has worked let's take it off and see And the marking tape should give it nice clean edges. That's really the plan. And you can see down there on the left. Whoa, look at those stars. Nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Whoa. I'm breathing a sigh of relief because it's been kind of not a gamble, but I certainly. You never quite know how it's going to go. And even this gold, just making sure. But hey, look at that. Whoa, yeah. This is going to look good. This is going to look good. There's still last touches to do. I've still got a fair bit to do. Once these, this is all off, finish up the portrait of Josh. Um, finish up the ball. There's a lot of edging little pieces that I need to edge and clean up. So I'll come back and do that. Wow, look at that though, yeah. Uh, oh, 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 I'm quite pleased with this. Ah, oh, the bottom of the back down here needs doing. <clears throat> look at that, that's looking pretty cool. We've got our 12 stars for his 12 titles. Let's get a knife. Gonna get this knife, the scalpel, and get these little bits, these edge bits out.
is actually quite nice where the spray paint is on top of the the brush strokes beneath so you get the that kind of organic the hands the quality of the hands in the spray paint but you get that nice strong you get a nice strong edge whoa yeah um yeah, you can tell I'm pretty pleased with this. This looks fantastic. Very nice. It's taken absolutely ages to get the corners, get the edges, just get it planned. Like just the, the every step of the way, working out how to do things. <clears throat> it takes quite a long time, to say the least. But I think so far it's worked. Very, very, very nicely. And because it has worked nicely, I'm more, I'm a bit more relaxed about the deadline for the card drop. Because along with this, of course, I've got plenty of other commissions and other projects to be working on. So this has really taken quite a lot of time. And I'm glad because I think the results speak for itself, but also I do need to give my other project some attention too. But there you go, look how nice that looks. How they'll flash just like something you might get in a, a pack of tops or top deck or upper deck, is it? You can see there how nicely it reflects. It's even got the shiny edges. I put the spray paint down, down, down the edges. So it's Monday morning. The card drops on Thursday. But it needs to be already, I think, for later today or tomorrow, at the latest, I'm sure. Um, it is very close to being there now. Now what I really need to do is go and just finish up little details. Like you can see around the back and the lettering here. There's some bits on the portrait I still need to figure out around the ball, the bottom of the back there. But overall, it's the main thing is there now. And you can see the shine created by that paint, that spray paint that I added on. On Saturday, so I'm really pleased with how that's turned out. It looks fantastic. It's just the last touches to take the white line, the inside white line, interior white line. Just need to get that finished off, and then we'll have a Josh Gibson MVP Facebook card. So let's just get those bits done. I think I mentioned in an earlier video how uh, Buck Leonard and Josh were called the Thunder Twins or the Dynamite Twins um, when they both played for the Homestead Greys in the in the 1930s. Uh, Buck Leonard batted four far for Josh, um, and that was kind of the nickname that they were given. So as a little reference to that, I'm doing this design on Photoshop here of this Thunder Lightning Bolt and uh, Dynamite Stick. And what I'm going to do is be putting that into the background around josh um into these these spaces where the masking tape is though is what i'm going to be doing with it though is i'm going to be using glow in the dark paint phosphorescent paint which i tested on this uh this painting i did many many years ago or didn't really ever finish but i tested it on here yesterday just to see how well it worked and at night when the lights go out it's really really beautiful how well it kind of shines and i think that's going to be that's kind of part of the reason for adding this um 
Josh also said, or sorry, Buck O'Neill also said that the sound of the ball off uh, Josh's bat was like dynamite going off. And again, that will be a really nice, beautiful reference. Quite a subtle reference. You won't see it on the on a during the day, but when um, the lights switch off, you'll see this this um, essence of Josh and the other Negro League players still shining. And I think that's going to just give this piece another dimension, another part of the story, and something quite subtle. Right, that's the the lightning bolts and the dynamite sticks cut out. So now it's a little bit of this again, a bit of sandpaper, and then it's um, the glow in the dark paint. And then this piece should be all complete. So here we are, the final piece, the final Josh Gibson MVP uh, baseball card that I've been designing for the last month or so now. Um, it's come out absolutely superbly. I'm really, really, really happy with how every part of it has come along. And it's actually got better and better as it has gone along, despite all the challenges and problems and the, the things I had to decide on the way. Of course, this is where I started last month with my designs and my research you can see in my earlier videos about all of those and this is where i've ended up and i'm very pleased with it i have to say um we've got all the elements we've got plenty of elements in there which tell josh's story talk about the negro leagues talk about the history and um and all there of course we've got josh himself in his catcher's gear we've got the diamonds which is color blue and red and white to represent all of the, the, the two different teams that Josh played for. Um, of course, just the shape of the diamond, I think, is always um, very important because it's, you know, this diamond, it's a precious a precious thing, something that's valuable. The fact that baseball is played on the diamond, I think, is always very, very beautiful. We've got the gold, of course, precious metals, precious names, precious MVPs. Gold is the colour. We've got the... The ball, we've got the four pennants that Josh won, 1931, 35, 43 and 44. Um, we've got the 12 stars, um, 12 times all-star. We've got the, the dynamite and the lightning bolts. As I mentioned in an earlier video, how Buck Leonard and Josh were known as the dynamite twins and the Thunder Twins, so we've got a nice reference to them. That is painted with glow-in-the-dark paint, so you can just about see it. Depending on the light, you can see those kind of now, but when you switch off the light, they will glow. And again, I think that's a really nice kind of... I'm very happy with this final piece, or the final uh, detail, as I feel like that even when the lights go out, even in the... Um, even in the dark times, you know, the history of these players, the the, the morals of, and the, the stories of these guys still shine on. And those are things that we shouldn't forget. And so I think that's got a really nice reference to Josh, to the Negro Leagues, to where he came from. And, um, and a nice little thing that's seen during the light, but also in the dark times as well. Um... So I think that's about it. I mean, I think it's all there. I'm very happy with the composition, very happy with how the we've got that diagonal coming through the piece. Um, I think it's all just worked out absolutely perfect. So I'm very, very happy with it. Thanks for joining me in the journey and following my progress. And um, yeah, from here on, there's going to be prints available of it for a limited time. There is, of course, the originals going to be available. And if you would like a um, me to design you a baseball card for any player, then get in touch, let me know, and um, of course we can we can do something there. But for now, thank you very much for watching, and um, yeah, now let's get Josh onto the MVP trophy. So go to jg20mvp.com where you can register your your name on the petition. Thanks very much. Cheers.